You might have heard the story of the sprinter from Belarus, Kristina Simanuskaya. On August 1st, she said she was forced to go to the Tokyo airport after she criticized her coaching staff. She refused to board the plane, saying she feared for her safety. Instead, she was given permission from Poland to fly there to seek asylum, where she could begin the process of becoming a refugee. But it got me thinking. What happens to athletes who are refugees and can't compete for their own countries? Cue the refugee Olympic team. But what exactly is it? Let's start at the beginning. Ahead of the 2016 Rio Olympics, the IOC wanted to bring attention to the global refugee crisis. At that time, the United Nations calculated more than 65 million people were forced to leave their homes. So, the IOC created a team of refugee athletes to compete at the Olympics. Cut to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics and the team is back. Refugee Olympic team. It includes athletes from 11 different home countries and the 29 Olympians train in various host countries, including here in Canada. The team is run by officials from the IOC and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. They compete under the Olympic flag. The letters EOR stand for the words Équipe Olympique des Réfugiés, or the Refugee Olympic Team in French. As of the taping of this, the EOR has not won an Olympic medal. But Congolese-born refugee Dorian Kalatia won the preliminary heat in the 100-meter sprint. Running brilliantly there Powerful. for the Refugee Olympic Team. He takes it. What a great story and what a great journey. While he didn't make the final race, that's still very impressive. You see, it's not about the medals for this team. These athletes' personal stories demonstrate how strong they are and how overcoming obstacles just to compete at the Olympics is almost more impressive than winning a medal. Take Syrian-born refugee Yusra Mardini. While fleeing Syria, she used her swimming skills to save herself and a group of people on the dangerous crossing from Turkey to Greece. The engine broke and the dinghy they were in started taking on water. Mardini swam for three and a half hours to pull the boat to land. And in 2016, the swimmer was the first refugee to compete in an Olympic Games. No matter what she does here, Byron, she's already got one of the great stories of the game. Absolutely, and she's obviously got a lot of endurance. So if you're looking for an inspiring story this Olympics, look no further than the refugee Olympic team. All right, that's it for Kids News Explains. For CBC Kids News, I'm Arjun Rob.